It's time for our officials to condemn anti-Semitism, not just with their words, but with their actions. You can't denounce anti-Semitism, but waver on Israel's right to exist and defend itself. I'm starting an organization called Progressives for Israel. And I'm going to call the question for Democrats. Do you stand with Israel or do you stand against Israel? Because silence is not an option. Oh, we're not going to be silent, Andrew Cuomo. Uh, We're definitely going to talk about this latest move um, from the former governor to try and pivot into uh, raising money for uh, a, a state that has been accused by human rights organizations of apartheid in terms of what it has done to the Palestinian people and continues to do encroaching on their territory. But there's Cuomo uh, claiming to be a progressive, starting the Progressives for Israel PAC, and once again conflating anti Semitism with any critique of Israel, which is how Democrats consistently try to say that progressives. Real progressives like Representative Ilhan Omar, Representative Rashida Tlaib are in fact anti-Semitic when all they are doing is calling into question the support that we consistently give to a human rights violator. But anyway, if you thought, gee, Cuomo, progressives for Israel, is he, what do the American people think? What do Democrats think? Are we on board with this? Are they on board with this? In fact, no, Cuomo, funnily enough, is actually very out of touch with the people. Uh, Funny fact. um, because there's a new Gallup poll that shows that um, Palestinians actually hold now an 11 point lead in Democrat sympathies over Israelis. With 49% of respondents sympathizing with Palestine and 38% with Israel. 13% responded neither, both or no opinion. But this is a huge shift actually from just a year ago. The shift in opinions has caused sympathy towards Palestine to reach its highest point among all respondents at 31%. And a year ago, Democrats favored Israel 40% to 39%. And I think a lot of folks are pointing to younger generations as Sharon Zhang does here, says the shift is driven by younger generations with millennials and Gen Z slightly favoring Palestine overall. Now there's a number of reasons why this could be. Um, Let's talk about the violence. Last year, Israeli forces killed the most Palestinians in occupied Jerusalem and the West Bank in decades and are continuing that violence this year at a rate that could potentially surpass last year's grisly death toll. Um, In January, just this year, Israeli forces carried out a raid against the Janine refugee camp in the West Bank in which they killed at least nine Palestinians in what the UN analysts say was the deadliest single Israeli operation since 2005. Since then, Israeli forces have killed dozens more Palestinians with at least 83 Palestinians killed so far this year. So when you kill a lot of people, civilians, um, folks are gonna start taking notice and especially uh, younger generations who again have TikTok at their fingers and honestly are doing a pretty damn good job breaking down some pretty complex issues because it's not actually that complicated when it comes to trampling human rights like this. But I did want to ask Maz, like, do you think is this surprising to see this this turn? Uh, I yeah. What what are your thoughts on that? It's not surprising, you know. As you said, you know, they conflate a lot of times. People conflate anti-Semitism with any kind of criticism of what the government of Israel is doing. Clearly, there's Israelis, Jewish Israelis who want to coexist and they want peace with Palestinians and vice versa. And clearly there's uh, you know, members of the Palestinian uh, government that are also committing acts of uh, atrocities and, and, and killing innocent people. So that, that clearly exists. But if you criticize the Israeli government for doing some of the atrocious acts that it does, that doesn't make you anti-Semitic. And what sometimes boggles my mind is when I see conservatives Say, oh, you know, if you criticize Israel, that's anti-Semitic. And then you go, what about when those guys were marching in uh, Charlottesville and saying Jews will not replace us, yep. and they're far-right extremists? You guys are okay with those guys being in your camp, and that's not anti-Semitism. But when you criticize Netanyahu and some of the far-right uh, um, uh, actions that that are being taken and 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 killing innocent Palestinians, that's anti-Semitic. It's mind-boggling, and I think. The statistics we're seeing, as you said, are coming out of once I think you decentralize where the any information is coming to the American public, 
you're going to see a lot of people go, oh, wow, I didn't know it was like this. And you're going to see those numbers change. And that's what we're seeing. I think that fear of being labeled anti-Semitic has really what's been driving the coverage of what's happening over there for, for years and years and years and years. But as you pointed out, because we now have, especially the younger generation, they have different means of getting their news. Mm -hmm. You know, they're they're watching the videos on YouTube, they're watching it on TikTok, they see it on Instagram and Twitter. And suddenly it's without that filter and they are making up their minds for themselves. They're watching what's happening. They're seeing videos of the people there. So they're not getting this, you know, filtered version to avoid any, you know, appearance of anti-Semitism. And they're able to to make these in my opinion, better uh, judgments mm -hmm. about what's happening. And, and there is a world of difference that Republicans and even a lot of Democrats, apparently like Cuomo, don't want to acknowledge that you can criticize a government while not criticizing the citizens. You know, yes. that, that's not what's happening here. <laughs> We're not saying that, oh, everyone in Israel is, is guilty of this, you're all bad people. That's not happening. That is what people do to shut down these arguments so that we can't have these conversations. And they know it works. Yep. And that's why they continue to do it. And they're going to continue to do it. And it's also disgusting that Cuomo has hijacked the word progressives mm -hmm. for his little group. That that's also, you know, very just gross very rich. To me. He, yeah. he spent his time in office cutting deals with Republicans and punching left at progressives time and time again, Working Families Party uh, and and many other grassroots groups. So spare us on the label progressive, which now that Cuomo is using it has no meaning, literally just no <laughs> meaning. Um, so as well as the words Italian and anti-Italian discrimination, which he loves, it's like they were just handsy. I'm like, oh my God, stop. <laughs> um, but speaking of Israelis, and it's important as this Farron pointed out, they are not uh, adequately represented by this government. In fact, just recently, just in January, over 100,000 Israelis protested the Netanyahu government. 100,000 marched in the streets of Tel Aviv, one of the biggest protests in Israel in many, many years. Um, so that's important to keep in mind here. And I think it's a really good point to say, look, when you see the bombing of the Al-Aqsa Mosque, when you see the IDF, the Israeli army, um, you know, basically throwing smoke bombs and flash grenades at worshipers, you don't need a filter. You got your eyes to tell you what that looks like. When you see an, an elderly woman having, you know, being beaten by a military police officer, by the army, like, you know, you're, you're, you don't need a filter. So in a time of, you know, sort of believe nothing, everything's on the internet, it's all kind of a wash. I do feel like there are still these stories and videos and shocking images. We saw it out of Iran, you know, earlier last year that you cannot deny that still are there and cannot be, you know, falsified, at least not yet. And so I think it's really important. And the last thing I just want to say is that we are also on the other side of an election that in the United States, in the midterm election, where the Israeli lobby poured tons of money. Like millions and millions and millions of dollars into defeating whom? Progressive candidates. And who did they side with? Either centrist Democrats or far right insurrectionist Republicans. So don't tell us that you're progressive and that you care, you know, about basic human rights either here in this country or in Israel in the occupied territories, because we see what you're doing and it's not lost on young people. Thanks for watching The Young Turks, really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. You'll get to interact with us more. There's live chat emojis, badges. You've got emojis of me, Anna, John, JR. So those are super fun. But you also get playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air. So all that, all you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video. Thank you.